Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at one of the templates in Photoshop and see how we can customize it for our own work. So I'll select Command N or choose File New, and in the New Document area, we can select from one of the templates in the Photo area or the Print area, wherever you would like to, but I'm going to choose Print, and then I'm going to scroll down and select this poster right down here. Now, even though it says it's an Indie Rock newspaper style flyer, we're going to go ahead and customize that in order to have a gallery opening. If I want to see a preview, I can click on the preview area over here to see it larger. And if I want to download it, I can go ahead and close that preview and then click download. This is one of the free templates, so even though it says license Adobe Stock template, it just means that I am actually licensing it, but the license is free. All right, I'll click on Close in order to close this dialog. And in my Libraries panel, we can see that I've downloaded that template. In order to manipulate it, I will double click on it. That's going to open it up as a new untitled document. So I don't have to worry about ever making edits to the original. Every time I open this, it will open a new document. I can make changes and then do a Save As. Now, let's take a look at our Layers panel. There are a lot of different layers in this document. If you hold down the Option key and click on the eye icon next to the background, I can toggle them all off. That might be helpful in that I can now go selectively and look at some of the different layer groups. So the first layer group here is this Images layer group. And if I toggle that on, we can see that there's basically three different locations in this template for us to put a photograph. So let's start with that. Let's go ahead and replace these images. So here I've got the main artist, and if you ever wonder what's on a layer, just click on the eye icon next to that layer to toggle it on and off. So now that I know that this is the large image on the left-hand side, well, how am I going to replace that with my own photo? It's titled Your Image Here, so that gives me my first clue, but I need to edit the contents of the smart object if I want to get the same effects that are used in the template. So underneath the Layer menu, I can choose Smart Objects, and then I can choose Edit the Contents, or it might be much easier just in the Layers panel to double-click on the thumbnail for the Smart Object in order to open the Smart Objects to edit the contents. And it might be a little hard to see here, so I'm going to right-click just in the background area and bring the background to maybe a medium gray. So this is basically the photo that I need to replace. So what's the easiest way to do that? Well, I think in the Layers panel, I will click on the Your Image Here layer, and then I will open up the photograph that I want to place there. So I'll use Command-O in order to open this and just quickly navigate to my Poster folder. I'll select the image. Now, I wanted to make sure that I selected some JPEG files and some DNG files or a RAW file just to show you the workflow with RAW. So we'll start with the RAW. I'll click Open. That will bring up the Camera Raw dialog box where I could make any adjustments that I need to. For now, I don't need to, so I'll click Open Image. And now I could either select all and copy it to the clipboard, or I could just select my Move tool, or I could even just drag the background layer onto the tab for this contents of the smart object. So that's this PSB file. As soon as it pops to the foreground, I'll release my cursor. It's going to warn me the target document has a different depth, but I'm okay with that, so I'll click Yes. So my image comes in. It comes in very large. I might want to transform that down, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command-T or Control-T, Command-0, Control-0 in order to see the edges of the transformation handle, and then we can just resize that in order to make it fit. Now, if I wasn't sure what size I would want, I might want to turn that into a smart object first in order to be able to resize it later without actually throwing away information. But for now, I'll go ahead and click on the check mark in order to apply that. All right, I'll use Command-0 to zoom in. And we can see there are a number of additional layers here. For example, there's this Adjust Hue Saturation. I can double-click there in order to show my Properties panel, and I could make adjustments to Hue Saturation here, or if I want that image to be in color, I can just toggle off the visibility of that layer. So I actually prefer it in color. At this point, I need to save this to save the edits that I've made to the contents of the smart object. So I'll use Command S in order to save that, and then Command W in order to close that. I don't need the DNG file, the raw file that we opened up through Camera Raw, so I can close that as well. 
and then we can see our photo in our template. All right, let's go ahead and do the same for the other two layers here. So again, if you're unsure about which layer is which, just use the eye icon to toggle on and off the visibility. Double click on the thumbnail of the layer in order to edit the contents. And let's try placing the file a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna use File, and then Place Embedded. I'll navigate to that same folder, select the JPEG, and click Place. One of the nice things about placing a file in Photoshop is that Photoshop will automatically scale it down to the width or the height of the image, depending on the aspect ratio, and it automatically turns it into a smart object as well. So in this case, I will need to make sure that it fills the entire rectangular area, so I'll just hold down the Option key and the Shift key and make that a little bit larger in order to fill that space. Tap Return or Enter to apply that transformation. And again, I'm going to turn off this hue saturation adjustment layer. You can see that, I mean, templates are a great place to start, but that's what they are. They're a starting point. We can customize this as much as we want. So I'll do a quick Command S to save that, a quick Command W in order to close that. We've got that image right there, and we just need to do it one more time, this time with our last photo. I'll choose File, and then Place Embedded, select the photograph, and then use Option and Shift in order to make it a little bit larger. And then inside the transformation handles, I'll right click and choose flip horizontal. I actually want it to be facing the other way and then reposition it within the image area, clicking the check mark when I'm done with my transformations. Now, this is quite interesting. If we look over at my layers panel, you can see that the adjust hue saturation layer was the targeted layer when I placed this document, and that's why it was placed on top of it. If you need to, you can always reposition the layer by just dragging it and changing the stacking order in the layers panel. I'll go ahead and leave it there and just toggle off the eye icon next to adjust hue saturation. So for our third image, I'll use the same Command S and then Command W to save and close that. All right, so we have all of our images replaced. There's a number of different graphics here that we could also go in and change. For example, if we don't like this peach color, we could change that to blue. That's as easy as just finding the layer that you want to change. I'll go ahead and use the disclosure triangle here next to the word headline. You can see there's a layer called headline box. If I double click on that, it brings up the color picker because it's a shape layer. And then I could either choose a color using the color picker or I could position my cursor anywhere over one of those photographs if I wanted to select a color from within the image. All right, I'll click OK for now. I'm not gonna walk through changing all of the other ones. I just wanna show you that I would then move to the text area here. One thing that I forgot to mention, since I already had the font installed that's used in this template, I didn't get a font mismatch dialog when I opened it, but you might have, in which case you can go ahead and download and install the font by clicking on the cloud icon that's in that dialog, or afterwards by clicking on one of the type layers in the layers panel that has the little explanation mark on it. Because it's a type kit font, it will automatically download from the type kit site and you can use that font within these templates. All right, so I wanna change this large bit of headline type here. I have the type tool selected, and if I click anywhere inside of that headline type, it would select that type layer for me automatically. Then if I just triple click in there, it will select all of the text. So I might wanna change this, for example, to Antarctica. Now, because Antarctica is a little bit longer, I might need to decrease the size of the font, I will swipe it in order to select all of that type, and then from the options bar, just use my arrow key with the point size selected, and just bring that down a little bit, maybe to about 82 points, and then commit to that text. And of course, if you don't want a line of text, you could just turn that off. So for example, if I didn't want the ABCD presents text, I can just hide that. So I think you can see how easy it is to use one of the templates for a starting point. And in fact, if we scoot over to Bridge for a moment, if we had worked just a little bit longer in this document, we can see that we can end up with something that, although may look very different and has a very different use, I would never have been able to do this so quickly without starting with one of those templates. So there you go. There's lots of great templates that you can access through Adobe Stock. I hope you'll take advantage of them. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.